What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Talking Tricks. Today, the boys and I are, are going to be going through some of your YouTube comments you've left on our recent videos, and we'll be responding to them. We got some pretty good ones, some hot takes, some disagreements, and some some praise, maybe a little bit of that. Did we grab praise, Frank? Did we... Uh, I, th I think so. I think there's one about Bryce's flowing hair, which I'm yep. very excited to read. So uh, we're going to check that out. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the first video we're starting out with is our latest. We're just going backwards order, but base trick terminology, lots of trick theory in this one. Um, but there's only really one comment we want to address for this one, and it's uh, this one right here. So for vert kicks, I think it's very easy to use the transition followed by the number of kicks. So front side nine, back side nine, GMS, swing nine, tack nine, etc. Um, and we actually very specifically addressed this in prior episodes. Maybe we didn't make it clear in this one. I kind of forget. But uh, it is very problematic to say the transition and then the kick because there's a million ways to transition into different different types of kicks, if that makes any sense. Um, so just yeah, like and, and just saying front swing or back swing does not solve the problem. Right. No. You can you can technically vanish into a backswing nine and we would still call that vanish nine. Yeah, you would call that vanish nine. And vanish nine colloquially has always referred to like cheat kick type of things. But um right. yeah. But like even even if you were so like this they have done something which uh they say we're going to name it via the transitions, and then they also use front swing and back swing, which are not transitions because swing is a transition. Front swing or back swing are specific types of swings. Mm -hmm. Even if you were to go and do that that still wouldn't alleviate the problem because mm -hmm. you would still have ambiguity. The one that you just mentioned uh, a moment ago, but also the one arising from the fact that there are two different types of front and back swings. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yep. so um, yeah, basically and just for, watch for, all our it, videos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, yes. No, yeah. but um, in case you weren't sure what Bryce meant by two different types of front swings and back swings, he's referring to rise-type front swings and aerial-type front swings, mm -hmm. as well as typical gainer type front swings and the underutilized croc type back swings so and i, I think i called gainer back swing right yeah yeah, yeah. and that, that's why i think this is such an important talking point because using the transition kills creativity so hard because now you've limited what different tricks you do now like there's only one way to backside nine or backswing nine when there's actually like so many different ways to back backswing nine same thing with vanish same thing with every transition really so also tack is in a transition so i don't know what's going on there um <laughs> but yeah perhaps meant meant to be the rap swing yeah exactly um so yeah that's Perfect. that comment um let's go i think these tricking terms must go is another one um actually no we had another comment on base trick terminology oh, um we did. and yeah and this was actually related to the fact that um i'll read the comment yeah if your criteria was that the base trick lands incomplete as was mentioned with tack and rap wouldn't that make gainer switch the base trick for back swings and not gainer flash mm -hmm. i still consider gainer flash the prereq as it's just more basic and generally easier and thought it was worth saying as to me i consider gms much easier than gm scoot and would usually consider the prereq uh consider it the prereq but i'm not sure that i'm but i'm sure that one would differ so um my response to this specifically is Chad, yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the reason we actually, um, I actually have a cool comment that I haven't talked to the boys about this on. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we have such a hard time with this is that because we don't really consider the other side where landing incomplete is actually easier. And I'm talking about the Lotus swings, Muggle Slayer swings, and Croc swings, where it actually, you don't have to do a switch to get to complete. And the like, we actually only have to do a switch on these like, right leg landing tricks or right leg takeoff tricks so left um thanks frank so essentially this only happens on half tricks and the other half have i don't have this issue um and it, the other it's just sad that the other half of tricks are the ones that are highly neglected so mm -hmm. um when you look at all tricks that's that only accounts for half of them um then bryce also has some arguments about perhaps the regarding to the ambiguity of what a base trick is I wouldn't necessarily no. arguments about the ambiguity. I would say that, like, ultimately, uh, what we're seeing is that there's sort of uh, – we, we have a decision to make when it comes to what we decide the various ba base tricks are. And the decision we make is what is the criteria that we use to evaluate something as a base trick. 
it needs to be something that's hard, fast, and universal so you don't end up having special cases and you're not doing a bunch of special pleading. Mm -hmm. And the current one that we're using uh, in order to arrive at what we are currently doing is whatever trick takes off from that takeoff and requires the least amount of natural rotation, so rotating to the side that you're meant to go to, mm -hmm. in order to make it to complete. Mm -hmm. Because we've just taken complete as the universal basic landing position. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just what we're... And, and the reason for that is mostly historical and and just because that's the canonical way that it kind of naturally comes to us from mainstream. But the alternative, if someone doesn't necessarily like that, if they prefer having base tricks that don't have twists in them or don't necessarily have switches, uh, w one way that you could get around this is instead choosing base tricks. Uh, and, and literally, it is just to come up with any other rule for how you assign a base trick to a takeoff. Mm -hmm. But one that I had come up with that I think might potentially make some sense to people is that a base trick is assigned to a takeoff by having yourself land in exactly the same position that your swing leg is in during the swing. So, because uh -huh. that's a little complicated, mm -hmm. let me explain what I mean by that. If I'm doing a gainer swing right now, so j and, and I'm just going to do a gainer, I'm going to be doing exactly what I'm describing here because I'm going to be swinging with my foot in, if it were, if it were on the ground, what would be the hyper position, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So technically this is going to be short hyper, but to be very, very specific. But if I land now my gainer without doing any additional rotation, I'm going to land in short hyper and that would make this from this convention of base trick terminology, the base trick for gainer. It just happens uh, to be the one that we would normally consider to be the base trick here. Mm -hmm. But there are some other weird anomalies to this uh, choice as well. It doesn't like solve all problems. While it does have gainer being the base trick of gainer, mm -hmm. uh, and it will also have things like caner being the base trick of caner, rise, uh, you won't have rise being the base trick of rise anymore. You'll have river sow being the base trick of rise. Yes. Aerial won't be the base trick of uh, aerial takeoff anymore it will actually be uh, an aerial front walkover sort of thing yeah yeah uh yeah. lotus is probably the weirdest one on this list in my opinion yeah. Lo lotus and master scoot or, or yeah. grand master yeah. scoot because they're going to be very different from what you normally expect normally people think of like gms as the base trick for the grand master tree yeah. but really this would have you doing a gm uh gm scoot like or mega gm switch. Yeah, exactly. But where you're not going to land in uh, complete, you're going to be landing in uh, mega. short mega. Yeah, so. short mega. And then you're going to land short semi for um, the other side for Lotus. So, so yeah. there's always going to be some... W Absolute it, semi, Frank. There's no perfect yes. choice yes. for base trick conventions that we've come up with, but all of them have their sort of little quirks and their advantages and their disadvantages. And... Uh, the advantage of the one that we're currently adopting, the one that um, sort of privilege is complete, is that it makes it, it it just plays nice with the suffixes that we use for landing stances, really. Yeah. Um, but for <clears throat> the base trick uh, choice that I just mentioned a moment ago, what's nice about that one is that all of the base tricks are unrotated. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to come up with a names for variations that specify doing less rotation than the base trick base tricks really do represent the base of the tree in terms of rotation, and then you add rotations onto it in order to get to higher tricks. Yeah. You never have to remove them. Regardless, you have to pick some kind of arbitrary something for base tricks. Right. There's no way, there's no two ways about it. It's just, that's, yep. that's just it. So yeah, this isn't, there is no perfect solution to this problem, at least none that we've been able to come up with. Yeah. If put, you want to put your suggestions, much. yeah, put your suggestions for a better base trick formulation in the comments below and maybe we'll respond to it there you we go. absolutely would <laughs> so yeah. um all right so we got the next video which is these tricking terms must go um first one is i understand if i can yeah so we had peter say i understand cheat as i'm supposed to do this rotation in the air but i cheat by doing some of it in the ground before takeoff so a cheat 900 is when you do less than front side nine but still call it a nine in the same vein a cheat seven twist is a cheat cheated double b twist fka what's fka i'm a dumbass 720 b twist formerly known as ah got it and a uh, cheat gainer is cheated forwards is a cheated forwards gaining back lip okay well j just to address the last okay. point i don't care yeah yeah on the last <laughs> point uh the direction in which you traveled throughout a trick is irrelevant um 
tricking doesn't care about whether your gainers go forward or your corks go forward mm -hmm. or they go backward. Um, you probably want them to be going backward. Yeah. Um, but this is something we've been fleshing out a little bit more. Uh, direction of momentum is just a really shitty name for what we refer to as direction of momentum because uh, we don't actually care where your quote unquote momentum is going, which is actually your direction of travel. So we're going to start calling that direction of travel now. And right. direction of travel doesn't matter. I don't care if you're you're going forward your whole cork swing thing. Your dom is still backwards. I do want to say that there is an ideal direction of travel, and it is when that aligns with your target. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, because like like we said, you there is a direction that you want your tricks to be going, and do it. You can do them in the opposite, like going against that direction, but you're really just shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Um, but this is, so to address the rest of it, this is a very interesting formulation of cheat that I, I don't think I've ever really heard before. What he's saying is basically the act of, you know, stepping your right foot over to start the cheat kick is part of the cheat, if I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, it's not part of the transition yeah. uh, that's taking place beforehand. It is th that part where you're stepping and moving on the ground is actually part of the cheat nine according to this conception of cheat nine. And that just fundamentally does not comport with the rest of our trick theory, because we have specifically defined tricks to be those things that occur after takeoff. Mm -hmm. And so since this is, a, this is a part of motion that's occurring before takeoff, right? Yeah. It just can't be a part of the cheat nine. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it, it kind of, it muddies the waters with transitions too. Like this is the problem is, so I, what, what if I do a B twist, vanish uh like nine is that vanish cheat nine actually do you guys call that vanish I, I know we don't say the cheat but would you guys say that's vanish cheat nine technically or would you say that's just vanish tech nine, nine yeah. it's vanish tech nine yeah tech, so that's what i'm saying so like technically that's... or vanish nine it's it would i wouldn't call it cheat no it is the, the cheat is cheat is like a setup and not not any particular you know it's like standing backside nine standing is the setup standing it's arbitrary it doesn't matter it's not it's not a part of the trick the cheat nine isn't the cheat isn't really what matters i i understand what he's saying but this is kind of like an older school understanding of the concept of cheat mm -hmm. cheat's just a setup mm -hmm. it's it's like spin step into b twist it's not a part oh. of the b twist it's how you approach the trick it's the strut into the scoot before you triple uh before you bell does swing triple court Scott Skelton. Um, <laughs> but people didn't necessarily have that fine a grasp of the terminology over the ages. And so what happened is now cheat actually literally is the name for the for the the trick tree itself and not just the way you're taking off into it like a J step. And as a result, we now have caner style kicks and uh, attack style tricks, both being called cheat. Mm -hmm. Right. And well, additionally, like like this almost separates cheat kicks from everything else. Like it doesn't, it's not compartmentalizable or it, it isn't easily like broken down into pieces that we can reuse. This like separates cheat from everything else. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. So it's, it's far easier to just like absorb this and, you know, understand that cheat is a setup. Another really good example of this is when people do uh, skip, but colloquially called reverse mm -hmm. rise, where they, you know, do a whole setup into, they do basically a skip setup to get themselves into like a hyper stance to front swing into rise so that they go against their dom. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, realistically, they're not doing anything different. It's just a different setup into a rise. And that's functionally the same thing here. It's an interesting phenomenon. We just, like, randomly pick some things, like, that are groups of tricks to have names about, and we don't have it for other things. Like, it's just random. Um, right. So... And, and it, yeah, it, it, that's just, like, it makes it <clears throat> weird to have these just strange outliers. Like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, these things can have like cool like street nicknames for what they are. Like I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. A cheat nine is always going to be recognized as a cheat nine, but at the same time, when we have the descriptive language, it's we can see the issues that arise from that. Yeah, yeah. Um, really quickly, I know we didn't write this in our notes, but Zach's comment here is very cursed, and that's all I want to say about it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen this comment from Zach. Go ahead it, and read it for us. It's uh, okay. I guess I, I guess I will. Um, I don't want to platform this. My solution for the double snapu snapu twist snapu oh, dub yeah. problem. If we want to give it a separate distinct name, uh, we know immediately that we're talking about a swipe with two twists. After, uh, let's break down a snapu. 
There are two parts of the snap boot, the swipe or the snap and the twist. From there, from there, it's not hard to make the jump to segmenting the word itself into two syllables. Sna representing the swipe and poo representing the twist. So the most straightforward, easiest name to adopt for this trick uh, would be that. Oh my gosh, sorry. I'm like having a stroke right now. That represents that there is a swipe followed by two twists. Therefore, snap poo poo. Um, no, I will not take constructive criticism. Um, I, I I wish you hadn't read that out loud. I know. I, I Me too. <laughs> and I, I don't... This is Chris. I, I'm, I'm sad that four people like this. <laughs> That's way too much validation. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Moving moving on. Uh, does someone want to take Eric's comment? Um, or do you want me to read all of them and have a stroke? No, I don't. I don't know which ones. Are. I mean, it would be pretty fun to just keep, you know, keep criticizing your reading reading skills. Okay, so. well, well, Bryce's responses are also Bryce is also having. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I was having some serious trouble getting that one out there, but oh man. Thankfully, okay. I, well, here's the thing: I wasn't even reading. That was just me struggling against myself. <laughs> That's somehow worse. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here's my notes. I hate the terms wrapful and tactful, also uh, because they're not fulls. Actually, kind of agree with that. Um, and tack to me doesn't imply, we have a problem with that, Jason? I mean, they're flipping single twists. They are not fulls by literal definition, but they, the concept is a full twist and they, they meet that. They yeah. satisfy that. I guess you want to start calling cork swing fulls then, right? Yeah, I do. Oh my Those God. are also, <laughs> chat, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I think fulls should, should refer to just if you take off two legs because it's it's complicated rapful already it's complicated tackful i agree with this take so far and tack to me does uh doesn't imply a twist because tack raba has no twist agreed and tack raba shouldn't be considered the base either that's a bad a base trick I, i'm not saying that eric says that but mm -hmm. agreed um and agree tack doesn't tack is actually just the name of the trick tree that we've done with base trick terminology mm -hmm. so i suggest we specifically call it tack twist agreed in the same vein as b twist being yeah yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah and I mean, that's sort of how we do deal with, like, we the swing full came up as a joke a second ago, but, like, literally within our uh, terminology, it's gainer, it's swing gainer twist, like gainer swing twist, right? So, yeah. Fuck you guys for saying, or what, no, sorry, you said twist, not full. Okay, just kidding, you guys are good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but, but Eric is exactly right, and that, I think, if we didn't specify that enough in this video, like, that is exactly what we are saying. Like, that should be tack twist like lotus twist will be its own thing muggle slayer twist will be its own thing you know like we should be naming base tricks and then add, appending twist onto them so that they are more modular so yeah. agreed completely yeah. uh for the rest of this also for pop b twist i agree it doesn't exist and it is just a full we'll talk about that in a second that's two trick versus four trick unified mm -hmm. theory yeah and if and then i agree with bryce if we want to be as specific as possible we have to adopt four trick theory mm -hmm. Even though I hate it, I hate that idea. <laughs> I have to do it. Um, they just don't care about your feelings. Yeah, facts, facts that don't. Is. That's true. Um, uh, specific, uh, specifically because if it takes off from short mega, then it also takes off from absolute hyper. Yes, that is technically true. Mm -hmm. So if it's a pop B twist and a pop rap full, pop tack, yes. But if it takes off from absolute mega, then it also takes off from short semi then it is also a pop rise and that's stupid so this, this is an argument for two trick model then because of the ambiguity of takeoffs basically um that's my understanding i get i get from so i i do agree with eric that it takes off of technically when you take off of a unified when you perform a unified takeoff it takes out from two separate landing stances that is technically true Two um, different sequential landing stances, but where a sequential landing stance necess necessarily takes into account that there is only one foot on the ground. So, like, by definition, you're, like, technically wrong, but I can see the analogy you're drawing here, right? Like right. I, okay. what you're saying. It, for us, it is far easier to just refer to the four trick model and say that these are separate tricks um and we actually have another comment that's kind of related to this i think um about the about unified takeoffs uh so this is great kind of grit for the grain um yeah it, it's it's just far easier to address these as like individual tricks themselves separate from 
combining them as like two like single leg takeoff tricks um mm -hmm. and and in this way they are separate from their respective counterparts that are single leg takeoffs so mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess I kind of agree. I'm not quite sure where Eric is like going with this. I think a lot of this stuff is what we kind of were agreeing with in our video. Um, it's just a matter of whether you do two trigger four trick unify takeoff theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's. Do, I actually want to read the reply from Lucas Cable about this, and we'll we'll do a hot, hot on the spot response. Okay. Pop B twist would take off from front side, whereas full takes off from backside. This name is. The name is stupid, but the concept is valid. It performs the same notion as a B twist, but from front side with a unified takeoff. So it is to B twist what full is to cork in, in the same air movement with a different takeoff position. So Luke is kind of right, but mm. Luke is wrong in that that unified landing stance at short mega and absolute hyper is still backside. Right. Um, so that's the only issue is that. Technically, this is closer to full because full is a backside trick and a twist slash b twist, which are the same trick. I guess we haven't hit that home enough, and we'll have to do a video on it soon. Mm -hmm. um, take off from front side. So this is kind of right, except for the glaring error that that stance is backside and has historically been used to take off from standing backside tricks because inherent due to the inherent less rotation needed to complete the standing backside trick. Mm -hmm. It only becomes right when we switch to the four trick unified model, because then suddenly- no. uh, Even no. then it's backside. Even still, even still it's backside. No, it's still, no, it is oh, still okay. backside because now we distinguish based on whether or not you're at the various different 90 degree stances. We would be saying like, all right, you're not doing pop full anymore and you are not doing, but we also wouldn't call it pop B twist either because pop B twist would still also be a completely different trick. So mm -hmm. it would be something different. Yeah, but. I think Luke is arguing for the four trick unified takeoff theory, which I will agree with. Yeah, I'll agree I, with I don't, you. I don't think, I think he needs to just brush up on the stances for this. But otherwise, yeah, I, I would say that that's true. Yeah, and then speaking of Luke Cable, I'm actually gonna save this one to the end because this one, I mean, just look at it. Um, we're gonna right. address this. He's later. got a long. <laughs> he actually has a, a much a, a big response or a big comment on the same video and we'll just have to get back to it because uh yeah. like you said it just take up too much time yeah we have other people who we want to also respond to um so first we have luxie on this video so this is our why are your tdr why your tdrs are actually master scoot um so he said great video guys finally you put something so specific about contact extremity orientations and tricking kind of trying to understand what that means anyway <laughs> i have collected some of my comments below 714 i'm aware that the sequence of contact extremities and their orientation defines a transition by name however all con contact extremity what? is one of the extremities that's furthest out from you i'm pretty sure so, it's like so i think two. yeah hands or foot um the issue is that the orientation the sequence of them defines the transition by name yes mm -hmm. orient orientation is not is not a requisite for transitions. Transitions can occur from any landing stance. So the orientation of the sequence only uh, the orientation of the I guess that could be vague because like if you say like the orientation of but I'm, I'm thinking like the physical orientation in regards to like where you are with relation to your target um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it doesn't matter. You can vanish no. from front side, you can vanish from back side, you can vanish from the sideways stances like, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it, Transitions are invariant under varying amounts of rotation that you can do during them. You could do the two, uh, you could do the transition to a transition, excuse me, so the same transition, but do it with two varying different amounts of rotation based on the combo you're doing because, you know, the trick that you did just before has more uh, angular momentum than in another one. And that wouldn't suddenly mean you're doing a different transition. I, I think I we have really quick... capped it, though. Sorry, go, J go ahead, Jason. I was going to say, Frank is going to talk about the exact same thing I was going to talk about. So I'm just going to talk over you, Frank, because you talk way too much on the podcast. <laughs> I need more airtime. People think you're this telling. is the Frank show, and I'm mad about it. Like, I contribute. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking leaving, bro. I'm fucking leaving. <laughs> All right. So um, love you, Frank. Anyway, <laughs> you um, so yeah, what Frank is going to say, though, is we actually did cap it. We actually we talk about this in a much older episode one of our first episodes we talk about um this phenomenon uh and it's that we basically have to cap it at some point because uh, we cap it around like basically up until the next complete mm -hmm. so or our full 360 actually i don't even think 
because we can go past complete. I think with skip, we we allowed like 360 degrees. It depends on the transition too. I think. Yeah, because there's because there's multiple ways you could carry through. Technically, you could carry through to like mega, or you could carry you could just literally carry through and not rotate whatsoever. Yeah. And like, technically, that's valid. You mm. know, you could you could land your full and then carry through by just jumping up and down and then performing a quirk, but that's still carry through quirk. Mm. Like. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, so there, there is like Bryce is saying, there's uh, varying degrees of rotation allowed in them and in transitions, and as a result, they they can you know kind of take off from any landing stance as well. And I, I do want to speak to why we cap it because we cap it because at some point it becomes a trick in itself. And what I mean by that is like if you do a skip, and like let's say you're doing a skip off your left leg onto your right leg and you end up rotating twice and you did an invert you're basically doing like a, a swing 12 kind of thing like you know well it, like yeah, a, without a the swing, kick <laughs> swing 12 60 no kick or whatever or not we, 12 we, sorry it'd be like 14 or 10 because you're right some, yeah some it's a, it'd be some number it'd be swing x no kick um mm -hmm. however my argument for for no kicks is that they can't be tricks because the defining feature of vertical tricks and the difficulty of them comes from performing a well executed kick i i disagree only in the sense that like i i agree that most people are going to do kicks and i think the no kick version should just exist to kind of fulfill our trick theory model but uh it's not really a practical thing to do but um, we should still call them tricks in order to kind of well, talk about so you stuff should, in a logical way. Just because you can name it in our language doesn't necessarily mean it's a trick uh, if we accept that no kicks are not tricks. And I'm totally fine with that, by the way. I'm totally fine with no kick not being considered a trick. I, I just like the symmetry it makes for uh, having, I, I having no kicks and invert disagree. versus vert. It's like Frank, both Frank is Frank is right, even though I hate it. <laughs> I, I would agree. I'd say that if it exists within the tricking framework, it technically exists as a trick and it's cursed, but what can you do? Yeah. Anyway. Historically, though, for historical reasons, even though it appears as like a ghost in our system, uh, the mainstream tricking culture would generally not consider uh, vert kicks that don't actually have a kick delivered as a trick. They would generally consider you to have messed up whatever you just did. Oh, yeah, or, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just use context clues. <laughs> additionally yeah it's also just like um if if we are to consider them tricks like the difficulty level for them is just like so low that it's almost not even worth performing yeah. in like a in a competitive sense so, yeah guys right, moving I, past that we've I, got to finish this comment well yeah like but a for, page long. i do just want to point out that i just saw that there's a tutorial for triple corkscrew uh by bot and it's a uh, 138 long <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just picturing just learning triple cork in a minute 30. And that's just, that's hilarious to me. That's how fast it is nowadays. <laughs> All right. However, just do, do double cork big and fast. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> however, also momentum sequences of extremity should be taken into account to define tricks. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this is something that I'm starting to, when I hear this, uh, yeah. this is starting to sound like a busting out the microscope in order to make distinctions about tricks sorts of things. Yeah. And like, cause if you're saying I need to by momentum sequences, if I'm taking this literally, I, what you're saying is I need to watch my feet and hand, the feet and hands of the tricker that I'm watching. And I need to think about which direction they're moving and how fast they're doing it. And if they very, speed up or slow down too, apparently. Exactly. At various times during the trick. And frankly, I think that's just a lot of superfluous information. Yeah. Like, I don't think we need all of that in order to tell what trick is being done. We we can't that, overkill it with our trick theory. Um, that Yeah, that makes it, like, the amount of tricks just would be exponential. Yeah. Like, well. like, yeah, like, you technically could do this and come up with quote-unquote new tricks or whatever from it, but it's just, it's going to be too hard to differentiate so many well, things. It's not as, practical. As he... As he goes on to say, uh, the difference between master scoot with only left hand and TDR is not only the contact foot orientation, but all the, also the sequence of high momentum uh, magnitude energy peaks in the arms. It's like, 
So first of all, you've already admitted that there is a way to distinguish them without bringing all of this, <laughs> right? right? So we don't. So we don't need it, right? It's not necessary. Yeah. Uh, but then also the thing that you're adding on to is that now now I have to measure the kinetic energy peaks of my arms during this trick, and so if I just have my arms move faster at a slightly different place during my trick, I'm not doing a TDR anymore, mm -hmm. and that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. It, it's also just like if you want to like rigorously define it like what are you just relying on vibes are you just relying on yeah actual exactly, numbers? Because like, i want to i want to know exactly yeah. how you're measuring the kinetic energy peak of my arms <laughs> during this because i can see what direction my foot was pointing on the ground in mm -hmm. the fucking camera footage but i have no fucking clue <laughs> what the kinetic energy peaks of my arms are like, Jesus Christ, man. Actually, Bryce, you can't prove that's a TDR until you put on this motion capture suit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, for TDR, first the right arm has to swing in front of you. Okay, we kind of get it. Like, this is – he's basically talking about the fact that it has to gain he's, the momentum. He wants, he wants the definition of TDR to not just include – all of the necessary information that you need to distinguish it from other tricks, mm -hmm. but all of the information about all of the things that your arms and legs are doing, period. Mm -hmm. And while, yes, that would actually be a description of a TDR, it is unnecessary to have that many additional distinguishing pieces of information when we're already able to classify without them. It just makes it harder for us to say what trick is what. Yeah. Right? Um. All right, so for his next part, I'm not an expert, but I would say smooth attachment and therefore smooth force increase compared to high impact forces will not do a thing to your LCL, varus prevented, if it is healthy in the leg and glute muscles are strong enough. However, you can more easily roll your ankle like this. I do want to see what specific... Okay, it's when his foot's that way. So this is what you were bringing up, Bryce, one time about... Um, about applying forces perpendicular to the direction of your knees bend and it's not necessarily the foot that i'm concerned about though he is right that will that definitely uh sets you up in a situation to be more likely to roll your ankle what i'm more concerned about is the additional forces this is going to be placing on the outside of your knee because you are naturally going to be feeling a force pushing on the inside of your knee in that direction by doing this. Yeah. And I don't care how smoothly you get yourself into that position. <laughs> You've got the force of your jump that's way more than your weight pushing mm. your knee sideways. Well, that's not good. Well, Even doing that every now and then a teeny little bit, that's not good. Here's the thing. I don't think the smooth forces means anything because to, to me what matters is the peak force. Of, like, if your leg is going to give out. Because your ligaments and your bones, they have a certain amount of force they can take before they just give out. And so if you reach that peak force, you're fucked. If you don't, that's you're it. good. And that's really all it comes down to. So I don't think making it a smoother transition necessarily matters. I do agree with you, Bryce, that this does set up your LCL uh, to get fucked. That being said, LCL is actually less prone to sprain than uh, your MCL. Uh, which is funny because your LCL is actually not as uh, strong as your MCL, but we experience so many more valgus forces, which is your knee going in versus varus, and that's why it tends to be stronger. Um, that being said, I mean, just taking off sideways is just not going to be really good for your uh, legs. Can you combat it by getting good leg and glute strength? I mean, yeah, you can minimize uh, you know, the impact and all that, but... I, that doesn't change the fact that this does set you up a lot a little bit more for injury than like forward facing tricks yeah and, and if you have the decision at the beginning of your tricking career to choose to do rise in that way or in the way where your knee is actually bending in the direction that your momentum is traveling mm -hmm. it just makes more sense to do the one that's going to have the lower chance the lower probability for injury over the course of your career mm -hmm. like just simply it also looks better but all right, so last one really quick. I also wonder if athletes are unconsciously creating visual marker for the current direction of linear and angular uh, total body momentum by using specific contact extremity orientations. There's so many. I feel like he's being so extra with his words, right? Like even, I don't know. That's just a lot. very smart. Yeah, he's like, he's like trying too hard. No offense, Luxy. I, we appreciate the comment. Um, using the precise 90 degree inward hip rotation before TDR, for example, might also just be the best way to remember the momentum direction and therefore where to put down the hand after 
in cases when it is hardly possible to orient foot facing forwards due to hip range of motion limitations. Why would your hip be... Oh, because you can't, like, accidentally rotate enough to open up your hips, I guess? Uh, like, like for TDR with maximal contact, so talking about the fully grounded TDR here? Well, so what he's saying is uh, for a TDR with maximal contact time, you need a lot of flexibility, specifically in external yep. rotation with your hips, which I agree yep. with. Um, That's true. We've even talked about this before. Yeah. This is it, this appeared in the hand video, the hand uh, episode, hand stuff episode. Yeah. I do, I'm trying to still understand the unconsciously creating a visual marker for the current direction of blah, 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 by using specific contact extremities orientations. Um, oh, a precise thing. So I guess they, they put their hip exactly 90 degrees perpendicular so they know exactly where they're going is what he's trying to say unconsciously. I feel like that's not how... You, I don't need to orient my hips in a particular direction to know what direction I'm going. I point my head in a particular <laughs> direction to know what direction I'm going. I think we, we trick in a very dynamic way. I don't know about you guys, but I don't do every takeoff exactly the same every single time. But if I sure. feel like if I feel like I'm shifted a little bit to the left, I correct for that. Like you know what I mean? And the same thing with my swings. Like if I feel like I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to the right a little bit, I'll like go the other way. Um I think we trick a lot more dynamically than he's making it out to be here. And I also kind of don't really know what he's going for here. Like, if Yeah, you... I'm going to be honest here. Uh, I actually have very little of an idea of what he's specifically getting at with this last part of his comment. I, you know, maybe I'm just stupid, but I'm I'm struggling. Yeah, I, I think this is just a way to justify, quote unquote, like the sideways takeoff for TDR. Um, so correct mm. us if we're wrong, Luxie. You can let us know in this video. Um, but... I mean, overall, pretty good comments. Like, these are good things worth talking about. So, thank you for the comments. Um, but, yeah, let's see the other one. Hmm, I don't know. Um, I really don't get it, to be honest. Velu is doing his TDRs with his takeoff foot, almost completely backwards. Um, but it's still not really a master scoot, more of a single-legged Valdez. Do you distinguish between single-legged Valdez and master scoot? Is it the same thing for you? Amazing question. Yeah. Actually, so, so we price, hadn't done we had yeah. not done base trick terminology episode yet, mm -hmm. uh, and so we actually hadn't cleared up uh, for me specifically all of the various different takeoffs. All all we had done at this point was uh, verify for ourselves that it was in fact your takeoff that was distinguishing tricks amongst other things. Uh, so from that alone, I was able to conclude that this TDR TDR that lots of people do by rotating their foot extra could not be a TDR mm -hmm. just from our from what we had taken as first principles for our terminology, it couldn't be. And then I mistakenly went on to say that, okay, the trick that it actually is, is a master scoot. Because from my previous perspective, uh, the tricks that took off from short hyper and absolute hyper with either a caner swing uh, for the first one and a master scoot swing for the second one, they were the same to me. Mm -hmm. I hadn't yet been brought, to the, brought about to the position where those were different tricks. Uh, because it was normal for me when seeing people do either caner style master scoot or normal style master scoot, it was common for me to hear people just call those the same trick. Uh, now, however, thinking about it more, yeah, when you, uh, when you turn your foot all the way backwards, you are not doing a master scoot. You are doing a caner style trick. You are swinging up in the exact same way that you would do a crock. And so that makes this a touchdown caner. LTD caner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the case, however, that if you, and this is something that I've been talking with uh, Frank and Jason about, and I'm slowly bringing, uh, I, I brought Jason around slowly, but uh, I actually also think that it's a different trick when you step over 90 degrees. Like I mentioned in the video that I think it's bad for you to do that. And I mm -hmm. still stand by that for the exact same reasons. My, my thoughts on that haven't changed. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, I also think you are now doing a different trick because that 90 degrees away is something that we accept as distinguishing for other landing and takeoff stances. But moreover, we, we generally used to distinguish various other takeoff stances more than just the on ground foot rotation, because that can be, that can be fudged to some degree. Mm -hmm. What we really use to distinguish them is the shape of the swing, what the swing looks like on takeoff. And you can't actually do the front swing that you see in a rise from this 90 degree style takeoff position where you've gone all the way over to absolute uh meg uh, absolute excuse me absolute ultra 
because your leg isn't facing the right direction to swing backwards. You just, your leg doesn't swing that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you do swing here, it's more likely to be a partial swing, which is why you'll see lots of people do rapid rises from this. But because you can't actually do a swing here, in my opinion, that's even more conclusive evidence that these are not the same trick. And, and uh, just uh, it, symmetrically, by symmetry, this means that there's actually two different styles of B-twist slash A-twist tricks. One where you are actually taking off directly in the same direction as true front side with your feet facing forward, mm -hmm. and the one where you are actually taking off from a uh, short mega, uh, just like you know, many people think of B-twist without having to face all the way forward. Yeah. The issue is if, is that if it happens in backside, we can't neglect it in the front side. And yeah. that has historically how it's been. His front side has historically been very neglected, especially in terms of kicks. Um, and very obviously here in these areas. What these new tricks are, even though they are very similar to other ones, same thing. Well, it's the same issue with the A-Twist and Rise one. Like, that's very similar. It, people are going to neglect that there will be like they they may not be willing to accept two different types of rises or they're not literally the same rise or they're not literally both rise rather the turned over one is a new is a different trick that is unnamed i'm just referring to it as rise for simplicity's sake yeah you know that that and they would uh, like you know we'll also have to look at that from the <clears> other <throat> inverse of that the a twist side as well and uh, i feel like people are more willing to accept those are different tricks but yeah. not the rise type ones well, but i mean we have to be fair and even with the cross for all tricks well i was just gonna I, say i sorry were you, did you want to finish no 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 okay. that's it <clears throat> yeah it's just funny because talking tricks we've always uh thought that a twist and b twist were the same trick and shut the fuck up like they're they're not like there's no difference between them but it's so funny because I feel like we're coming back around and we're just like, actually, there's a way to differentiate B twist and A twist. Well, and it's th this. there's a way to recover the two different names. We could yes. have one of these tricks be A twist and one be B twist. But now the lines along which we distinguish them as being A twist and B twist are completely different from the historical context under which they evolved. Absolutely, which Correct. is totally yeah, fine. Preston. We're we're totally fine with stealing names <laughs> and doing that with them. We're yeah, okay. reappropriating re old names would be ideal because then we don't have to one come up with a new name. Mm -hmm. And two, if we just start to understand the new context of the old name, it's good. Yeah. Um, what is really cool about that is we can set a twist as the one that is like true because that's like the, you know the primary it's one. Better, absolutely. <laughs> and then and then you know the inferior B twist can be the one that takes off and requires more rotation. So um, I, I think that's beautiful. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything more to say. No, I'm just kidding. In my native uh, tricking language, we say Atos and Beatos are different tricks, and I think that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like we we would have con full circle. Atos and Beatos in the historical sense are the same trick. Mm -hmm. In this in this sense, they are. We ha now have a new purpose for for what was Beatwist. Yes. So exactly. Um, I'm still coming around to this theory. Uh, I I need more theorizing to fully buy into it, but um. And we also need a need a name for highlight what high blows, rise versus blows low my rise. Mind. There's I, I I know that high rise and low rise already exists, and to match what we did with a twist and b twist, it would be to use them. But I want to resist it with. Would, would high rise be the one that takes off from short semi because it is superior, and high is supposed to? You know, exactly, high is absolutely superior. I thought no. I don't thought, let anyone tell you differently. I thought low rise was the one that was very inverted and very over the top. Yes, his, yes, yeah, historically, but, historic, but it's not yes, high. Yes, yeah. <laughs> not high, Frank. What you're considering, what you're not considering. Right. This is this is rise as it is meant to be. Oh, this man. is royal rise. This is grand rise. That's what it should be. All right. Well, I, I want to check in with you, Jason, because I know you're short on time. Are you? No, we're good. Okay, we're Sorry, good. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is what was this hand? No, this is why your TDRs suck. Okay, let's go to hands and tricking. Um. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so we had it. We have a pretty quick comment here. Um, and look, I have a coworker who enjoys parkour, so I'm sorry for this, but uh, yeah, the comment is you are neglecting parkour. Front flip dash vault exists. That's TDR front flip. Um, Chad, yes, we are neglecting parkour. Parkour mm -hmm. is not tricking. That is a completely different sport. We mm -hmm. have different names for things. 
Yeah. And TD Rise front flip is more easily described as like a forward front handspring or Valdez type trick. It's not. We don't need dash fault. I don't even. <laughs> I want to puke just saying that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think. No, we don't need we don't need terminology from other sports. C yeah. dub ten and the issues that's caused. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I shouldn't mm -hmm. have to say that. Yeah. What? When we're we gonna use dash fault and trick? Yeah, I don't know. This and I if think there's no obstacles. It, it, there better not be obstacles on my gym floor. <laughs> Look, and, and by the way, parkour people, I don't go to your videos and stop you from bringing, banging your head against the wall or whatever it is you do there. So why do you got to come over here and like put this, solely this shit on my video, huh? I hate it because I literally just saw a video of someone banging their head on the fucking like curb, <laughs> like doing parkour. <laughs> and it was awful. Dude, that, I, I'm sorry, but masochists do parkour. Like parkour, I actually do have a lot of respect for that sport, but I would never in a million years do that because I don't want brain damage. Um... So, uh, I think Bryce said it best though. Here he said, uh, "It's not a bug in our system; it's a feature to not include parkour." Um, That's by design. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. didn't happen on accident. Um, Malik Scott McDonald did it off tramp to Resi. Doesn't count. Um, Malik, I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you this. Please refer to our services and tricking video. <laughs> I could say anyone has done anything on Super Mega Tramp, but that means nothing <laughs> in tricking. Absolutely nothing. Sorry, buddy. Love you though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll respect you. Far better tricker than I am. All right. Uh, Zach, Jason being salty while Frank simps for Bryce's quality content. Also, Frank pulling a Frank myself, but I find myself frequently getting lost in Bryce's beautiful flowing hair. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it's. There was a time period where it was it was YouTube versus me. I, I remember. <laughs> that. Yes, absolutely. I You know, I've moved on, Jason. I'm sorry. Uh <laughs> And now it's back. The world is healing. Nature has returned to where it should be. And it's me and Jason versus Frank again. <laughs> the, you know, I think our dynamics change a lot, too. And right now, we're in the, I'm in my villain era. I think I'm just so separate from you guys. Like, you guys do your own shit. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> you, you, you actually just host our – you platform our ideas. That's all you do. You just... That's literally – that's what our next episode is going to be, you guys, is literally me platforming them. They – first of all, Bryce and Jason agree with TKT. Don't let them convince you otherwise. They believe in TKT. <laughs> they're trying to convince me, and they're asking me to platform their fucking TKT, and I refuse. There we, there we go. The well's poisoned. <laughs> Frank, you, 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 you actually do a disservice to the theory by – by, uh, I don't by think describing it in such a way. Associating us with those troglodytes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I just, my villain origin story was you guys, it's just you guys talk about TKT. I'm sorry, but I really didn't believe Jason when he first told we, me. We, like, didn't, we, knew, we knew not what we were doing. We pushed Frank over the edge. <laughs> I th I thought they were pl pulling a joke on me. I really did. Like Jason talked they, to me for they an have hour. no idea they, what the, we're talking about. The audience about. probably thinks we're pulling a joke on them right now. <laughs> Listen, you'll just have to wait and see, audience. Yeah. I, the, we can't talk any further about this. <laughs> no, 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 right. that. Pull the contents out. Secret information. Um, how did y'all turn a two minute sampler into a thirty minute video? It's just content, baby. Talking tricks. Let's, let's, we get stun locked in. That's, uh, that's our brand, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Our brand is getting stun locked at like a backside nine. It's not even like <laughs> like it's the most complex trick. It's just like, hmm, what trick? Did they redirect or did they reversal here? <laughs> that is all right, Frank. I feel like you're adding me right now with the monocle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so good. Um, all right, so we have also that trick at thirteen thirty was supposed to be backside nine double, which was a vertigains challenge. Uh, I don't. Oh, Bryce, you got lights. this one. Yeah. Slam dunk this one, Bryce, please. Oh yeah, this is a this is a big no. Um, uh, <laughs> the trick in question was like this weird like whack knife nine type trick that was not landed by Ethan Turner. Not any disrespect, Ethan, but for just for some context, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. The issue with that though is <laughs> well, we've got our boy. So no so one wants got, to explain it. <laughs> no, no, no. Every everyone's just like this shit is. This is prima facie. It's on its face wrong. You should be able to tell why, and I feel bad explaining it to you. Yeah, I feel like I'm obviously. talking down to you. But... Well, can I? Maybe I'm being a dumbass. Is this wrong because double? Hang on, because they're not kicking the same direction. Is that why? Because one kicks the backwards direction, the other one kicks the forward direction. 
No. So there's multiple reasons. I guess theoretically, like, that wouldn't necessarily be a reason why double would be wrong. I think the first reason why double would be wrong is because even in old mainstream, backside nine double makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't make sense. You, as you have to reverse pop, essentially. Like, yeah. it just, there's no meaning to it. Uh, I'm kind of confused. Okay. Is this not a, a 12 variation, though? Because, like, hang on, let me see if he spots again. Because that would be 9, and then he rotates again, and then he tries to kick there. So would that not be a 12? Probably should be a 12, but I don't know. I'm not looking at the clip. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw. I remember when I watched the clip before, it really looked like he was trying to kick backwards from where he started, and that the intentionality was not to do a full rotation before the first kick. Yeah. But I can't read Ethan Turner's mind, so I'm open to anything. Yeah, Ethan, let us know, because I honestly don't know what was going on in this trick we also need language for kicking away from the target somehow uh yes which is something we're working towards as well but no matter what happens backside nine double don't don't yeah. let me catch you with that in your mouth yeah exactly um but redemption for nick Ticola. uh i really agree with frank here thank you that's all we need to know um <laughs> just kidding uh i don't call I, I don't think calling a pop swipe a variation of d-leg makes sense because d-leg in itself is a variation so pop d-leg and pop swipe are basically variations of punch rise or god forbid side flip uh basically yes um it's weird because we don't have a base trick name for this trick um but yeah a, a d-leg as we've always called it is a variation of some base trick that we have not named that i guess you could call punch rise but punch rise is kind of cursed so i don't like yeah calling so it that. exactly that's not exactly true because we don't call it punch rise we call it front flip or front half and then you could either be doing a side flip style a, a side flip variated with a d-leg or a front half variated with a d-leg uh, and if you know you know there is a difference between these two different things and that would be the four trick versus two trick unified takeoff theory models we're talking about <laughs> anyway uh but essentially yes nick is absolutely right i don't i don't know what you mean by you agree with frank we, all of us are on this on this uh, same the same wavelength come on frank i, I think one. i'm the only right one so uh... people like people think <laughs> talking tricks is literally only frank and i i i cry myself to sleep i'm sorry I, I, I don't i don't want that to be the case because i love you guys so true, though. um we're all gonna do the fusion dance and turn into an ultra version of frank uh this we is just a, turn into talking tricks this is a call for vertigo to um get jason or bryce on the the judges panel because i would love to see that uh unironically um okay so yeah good take from nick decola um let's go on to uh towel's comment <laughs> let's uh yeah. we need to see why don't you have someone on who doesn't live in your echo chamber and talk to them yeah that's a really good that's suggestion a, that's a great question mm -hmm. towels so i would love that but I would, the issue yeah, we, we would. have is that there is no one who engages with our content in good faith and disagrees with us. Crazy. They, no, they, there are people. It's just they, they leave comments and we respond and we have a good conversation. But um, that's yeah, here far say there's if, yeah. if you're the sort of person whose only comments on any of our videos or posts are always something of the effect to you guys are stupid. Mm-hmm sans explanation right like just you guys are wrong and i expect y'all to figure that one out for me see ya like right. if that's your contribution to the discussion and you're surprised that we haven't invited you on to have a cerebral talk about the ideas mm -hmm. i don't know what to tell you um why that you know if that's not if that's surprising to you you're probably not going to be very productive in a conversation on these things because the things we're talking about are a little bit more complicated mm. than figuring out why we wouldn't involve you in a discussion if every time you're provided the opportunity, you give us nothing, yeah. right? Yeah, Towel specifically has never left a comment that addresses any of the actual arguments and we say. we've been looking. We've been looking because we were, like, really hoping at some point that we would get something of substance to re respond to. And it's always just, like, yeah. it's always just, it's you're stupid. You're wrong. Yeah. Uh, this is dumb. Yeah. Or even, e even better, responding entirely past our post, like on the mm -hmm. your TDR is a master scoot thing, where he just, like, his response on the comment was just, like, something 
he was he was seems to have been one of the posters who did not watch the video and then decided to respond to it mm -hmm. which is hilarious when people do that yeah it's like it's cool if you don't want to watch our content you literally don't have to uh just like don't like there's so many times he's clearly never watched our content and then like talks about some random shit that like has nothing to do with our video don't, don't like, expect okay, us like, to be convinced by your counter arguments if your counter arguments actually aren't formed against our arguments yeah. right like yeah not gonna do anything it, you know? it's just like either engage with us or don't like it's really that simple it's just like if you don't want to watch our content cool just don't don't comment that's whatever like we don't care or uh, you we, can, you we can, do if you actually do have like genuine dissenting uh, opinions that are like based on concrete real points that we've made that you can like actually break down for us we do want to hear them mm -hmm. we have always wanted to hear them you just never provide them so what are we supposed to do yeah um and then just to address the echo chamber thing um this is just essentially a podcast of me bryce and jason giving our opinions i mean that's kind of what the whole deal is and we have had different opinions on things um but we just so happen to align on the opinion for adrenaline um this video was meant to be us giving our opinion not necessarily like gauging the whole community's opinion and and spitting it out there is just our formulation of it that being said, perspective of it. Yeah, exactly. I and I think that's valid. I don't think there's any like okay, it's, like you could call it biased. Sure, that's fine. Um, but we have at the same time though. I think we have we represent a lot of other trickers with this opinion, and a lot of people like you know want to be heard because they don't appreciate mm -hmm. the direction or what's being done. Right? Like, yeah. I don't think that there's not anything necessarily wrong with speaking for a larger group of people. Yeah. Um, this is a common comment we get though, specifically about our adrenaline videos is why don't we have someone on? So I, you know, and I don't know about you boys, but I have, uh, thrown away around the idea of having someone who's pro adrenaline on. And I think that is something we should eventually do. Um, and I want to do that. Um, so maybe for the next adrenaline controversy, Ooh. we'll, but can we that. find someone who's not being paid by adrenaline to do it? Exactly. It's like, here's, here's the thing you brought up a moment ago, like bias mm -hmm. and yes, we may, we absolutely have our biases against adrenaline. Like there's no, like just to be honest about it. Like that's true. There are things about them that we don't like, but we're also not like scheming villains twirling our mustaches. Like we actually have all mentioned at separate times that we would prefer a scenario where the people involved in adrenaline turn around and apologize for the things that we think that they've done wrong and just do better. And then that's just better for the tricking community. Like that's mm -hmm. actually what we want. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, we're biased against the current version of Adrenaline, but we're not biased against Adrenaline's success in general. Mm -hmm. We just want to see them do better. On I'm the other biased hand, against their success when <laughs> it comes at the expense of Trickings culture. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's sort of, yeah, to, to emphasizing my point there. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, the other side of the aisle, at least those who we've communicated with, like was pointed out by Jason earlier, are people who are specifically paid by them. Like, they have direct financial interests. Mm -hmm. So if we're biased these people are really biased so it's kind of hard to use that as like a counterpoint in this discussion everybody on every side of this discussion is going to be biased yeah. so yeah. but but there's an explicit conflict of interest there like there, there's a reason why it's just like like i go to medical conferences and you can't have someone present when they're also getting paid by a company there's a reason why they have a financial incentive to be like our product is amazing same yep, thing with right. these people um, and, and they're and like yeah exactly like you <clears throat> are likely you know being paid to defend adrenaline at least in some respect you know even if they're not yeah. e even if they don't even have to be they could just be like i want adrenaline to succeed so i can get paid more continue like, yeah and even if they're not consciously thinking about that it's just it, it it's a very complex topic you know what i mean so the point is they're biased um, yeah point, pointing the fingers out at bias is the wrong approach instead provide concrete arguments because then if you do that i you know i can sit there and argue about you as a person and how biased you are but if at the end of the day i am never able to produce a counter argument to your argument that should tell everybody else who just listened to me melt down about it that i can't mm -hmm. so yeah and it should speak volumes to them yeah so um checking on time with you jason can we go through two more comments yeah okay. let's great sure. Great. Uh, I did want to, I know this wasn't on our list, but I have a comment on the Talk and Tricks peer reviews video. Um, and it's, why do you guys say Ultra instead of Semi? Also, why do you guys 
uh, call some of the Vanish Nines TAC Nines. Um, these, I think even explicitly in the video, we said like, oh, if you're kind of confused about why we're saying TAC9, uh, we do have uh, the base trick terminology video kind of explaining it. Um, there's a re we've been trying to kind of inject some of our trick theory into our dissects more lately, so people who have been following along with the podcast can make sense of the practical approach to it. Um, so, you know, if it's something you'd like to learn, uh, I think start out with base trick terminology podcast. And then that'll give you a really good foundation to know all the weird shit we're saying, kind of. <laughs> so. Yeah, and why? Well, why we're saying them, what they actually mean. Yeah. Um, semi, and then for the semi ultra thing, it's uh, it's kind of just semantics. Um, there's historical precedent for using semi, but a semi has also historically been used incorrectly, and it's been then the meaning of it has been morphed, and the name of it has stayed the same, but mm -hmm. the name semi is like it is um deductive rather than like additive i guess so to say like semi in english literally means like almost or partial whereas and in the original use of the word semi double quirk was to mean like quirk plus one and a half additional or i'm sorry one and a half quirk um so it would mean like almost double quirk in a, yeah. a quite literal sense but it's been since adopted to be additive and ultra is implies more than semi does where semi implies less yeah and, and yeah so ultra it, it's just really just like a it really doesn't matter it's semantics but yeah yeah um using ultra it just kind of makes sense yeah in the context that we're trying to use it and rather than semi it 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 removes the possibility of people confusing our usage of it as a landing stance for the previous using usage of it as technically as a variation and not just any variation, but a variation that's meant to imply undoing a certain amount of rotation, which is just cursed in general. We shouldn't, if at any point in our tricking terminology, we have variation names to describe undoing rotations and stuff. I feel like that's the sign something's gone wrong. If you need, <laughs> if if your base trick is a variation, and then you n then need a name of variation to describe unvariating it to do the actual base trick, you've you're not in Kansas anymore. Like I think the only I think the only example I could find that's okay with that would be um, twist on like, twist. A twist on twist, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine too. But I, I agree. With that's that. a that's, that's a deliberate way. that's a deliberate variation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or we could just have negative numbers for if you're twisting the opposite direction. So you can All right, anyway, so your dark what's side. the other comment you were saying, Frank? Um, oh, it was uh, yeah. Luke, it's, uh, Luke Lucas Cables. is on – which yeah. video is that? Uh, let's see. I forgot already. I think it was base trick terminology. Um, no, it was these trick and chick – these tricking terms must go. These chicken the, – these chicken terms. These chickens. Go. These chicken Look terms. at all these chickens. All right. All right, Luke. Okay, I'll, all right. So let's let's split this up. I'll go ahead and start. Okay. Boneless. Yeah. Land a quirk in fake semi. So, land a quirk in short hyper, yes. and then vanish into a quirk. This means that vanish quirk. That is. This means that it is a vanish quirk that is boneless. So I see the need for the term. This is just, okay. The issue with that is you can vanish into a quirk from any landing stance. This is just a very hyper specific instance of a vanish quirk yeah it's it's where I you do the hyper and you don't happen to step your left foot in front of your right foot you just have it go from oh gosh yeah you just have it go from immediately from where it first takes off to swinging up as opposed to having your left foot step forward so that you can actually do the normal swing motion where your foot passes what does that change anything though like I, I, he I, even he even said that is vanish quirk that is no, it's, it's literally because like in a normal "Quote unquote cork." I, I, I get when people are normally when people are normally thinking of cork, they're thinking of it done from swing, and so they're thinking of it actually having a point where your swinging leg passes your ankle. Right? That doesn't happen in a boneless as it is being described here, and that's what he's saying is the distinguishing thing. Oh, that's it's crazy. a vanish, but where the, sw the what would normally be considered your swing leg isn't passing your ankle, and I I disagree with that. I don't think that's necessary at all. I don't right. think corks need swings. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. I agree with you guys. I, <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, essentially, it, the issue is that you could do this with any swing, technically. You could do this with, with the caner swings. You could do this with the front side swings as well. I, I, I also fundamentally don't see how it yeah, matters it, whether whether or not you 
take off the swing immediately, or if you do that step forward, that allows you to have an, an ankle pass in the vanish. Like that's I, not honestly, even part of the cork itself, personally. It might. No, be. It literally, I can't see it's why a that. Part, it's a part of the swing. Now exactly, it's a part it's a, of the traditional swing. However, yeah. but when we've removed the single leg transition of swing from the equation, and we're looking at just cork itself, divorced from the swing, mm -hmm. then it it just it doesn't matter. You don't have that ankle pass is not a requisite anymore. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this is just a very hyper-specific instance of one version of Vanish Cork. I'm not really interested in naming extremely hyper-specific tricks, as I've expressed in the past with old head variations. Like, what was it? What's a really good example of one, Frank? You know, um, you got him like off the. Oh, top. like Tie Fighter. Sorry. Yeah, where it's like where it's like a swing fei long, but like hyper specific. Yeah, like we don't. Well, I mean, like tack the entirety of like tack. Uh, at when it was still called rap swing was exactly this it is just one of the swings but we're going to name this one and we're not going to name the other ones right yeah exactly um we don't we don't need to do that we can do better is what i'm trying to express okay so uh thank you for clarifying what boneless is mm -hmm. i'm still not buying it <laughs> um is there did you read the second part of it or no uh I'm anytime sorry. you vanish either into b twist a twist doesn't exist. <laughs> this is a semantic thing. A twist, B twist are the same trick. Saying one doesn't exist just says that you agree that they're the same. Mm -hmm. Or rise, it's boneless since there is a swing leg and does not pass the plant leg given you vanish from hyper or mega. So um, it's a boneless to him anytime you vanish and you don't swing? And you don't have your swing leg, swing leg passing your ankle it's not a swing so it can't be a swing leg but i so get what he's saying i, I understand, understand that kind of addresses part of the four trick models or not in the four trick model but the the weird front side things like the rise the plus 90 degrees stepped over rise thing right because there wouldn't really be an ankle cross there that could technically be boneless i guess um and i would agree that I would rather see, bone if we're going to use boneless, boneless be used in a way that it is modular and can be applied to other types of swings. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. still not quite interested in it. Um, I, still don't, I, I still don't see how this gives us meaningful distinctions. Like, the, the only distinction I can see it making is one that I wouldn't ever feel the need to make in the first place. Yeah, so. it, the, the other problem is boneless is supposed to be a trick, right? So vanish cork yeah, boneless cork becomes cork. Now he's calling it a boneless, which is a trick when you do a rise as well. And those are the that's the same boneless as when you vanish cork. Like that's not that that's not conducive to. A well, good I think thing. what he's referring to is it's more it's more of like a transition rather than it is a. And if it's, a, it's like a new transition essentially. And then if that's the case, then so is it boneless cork then, or is it just boneless? It's, it's 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 a sign that not only does the thing itself not make sense, but its entire naming convention in mainstream made no sense because it should be a modification of the transition, but you always just added it on as a variation of the trick, even though it literally has nothing to do with the trick because the trick doesn't start until your takeoff, and this is all happening prior to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's see, nice. see, see, thirty or forty-five minutes prior to this episode where we broke down cheat. <laughs> literally. Um, Bryce, do you want to take the next one? Because I want to do rap pool. Uh, what is the next one? Hmm? Oh, I'll do it. Okay. I, I don't I, think Bryce has it up, but I'll do it real quick. Pop okay. B-Twist is a I completely... Would, Frank, I wouldn't system. sully myself by opening the document. That's your job. <laughs> you said Pop you would B open the videos. <laughs> Just kidding. Twist is a completely legitimate trick. The name is terrible. Agreed, the name is terrible. Technically, you are right. Pop B-Twist takes off from front side. You're wrong. It does a flat... Well, okay. No, yeah, that's incorrect. A pop B-twist would not take off from... Well, it, it depends on what is meant here by pop B-twist. Are we talking yeah. about... Because I know you, I know Lucas merges them together. So is pop B-twist in, in trying to refer to, like, the front half? Or are you talking again about how that plus 90 degrees from backside is not backside anymore? Because we, let's, we let's have agreed that that is. To, just to have something to argue against. We're not necessarily going to suggest that this is the argument he's making, but let's just assume he's going with the two-trick model. So he's he's just going with the... When he front says half. pop B-twist, he means front half. Yeah. Okay. I like that. It's completely a legitimate trick. The name is terrible. All right, so does a flat spin on the same axis? All right, I suppose the name Barry Twist after Dylan Barry's, or B-twist for short, <laughs> I propose the name. Um, so he just re... 
But he just said A twist doesn't exist in the top ones. Right. So he has B twist as a name for the single leg takeoff, but now he has B twist, a different B twist, as the same name for the two leg takeoff. Okay. Um, but we're gonna go he I think he's being kind of satirical because he's winking and he also says, but seriously tricking really ignores the front flip. Uh Rise and B twist are both front flips done on the tricking axis with twists. It's like we can it's like we can backswing and wrap into backside full twists with act with axis you can do the same in front side tricks the pop b twist is a front flip bent incredibly over axis with varying degrees of twist definitely not a triple full definitely an independent trick with unique characteristics okay so, so he, he is two trick modeling he absolutely does mean front half here that was exactly what he was describing yeah okay yeah um and yeah we we agree um i think we will i mean either way uh whether it's two trick or four trick um that's a little bit more like specific but we will concede that taking off of a unified stance is completely different from taking off of uh you know the front or i'm sorry like a single leg stance on either leg and mm -hmm. then additionally i will also agree with you that not just front flip but front side in general is highly ignored by tricking um front side takeoff kicks we're talking like a twist and rise style kicks we're only seeing an emergence of front sw uh, front swing rise style nines and tornadoes mostly actually mm -hmm. um, emerging because people are doing more front swing stuff but there also exists the a twist style front swings that for kicks that we aren't seeing anyone do yeah um, so yeah there's there is a lot of front side stuff that's completely neglected by tricking right now so i completely agree with this um, mm -hmm. i don't think you're pop b twist thing is incorrect here it is a terrible name yeah i would say i, I agree with that segment yeah it's it's a terrible name and the only reason it the only reason to ever reintroduce uh like it, it, it's a terrible name especially because we re literally already have names for both of the other tricks otherwise right so back full from backside or front half from true front side and you, there's no reason to ever invoke pop B twist because it's ambiguous and we already have these names to describe it. But if you were going to invoke it, it would be to describe something like uh, if you wanted to get rid of the rise A twist ambiguity that exists in, in tricks currently. It's something that I was mentioning earlier about how, you know, if you turn your foot 90 degrees, that should be a new type of rise. And how uh, we, I don't know if we've mentioned it in this episode, but if you do B twist from true front side where you're actually facing forward versus when you do it from the more short mega style these should also be different tricks by symmetry if you're going to accept my rise argument mm -hmm. and then in this scenario now we finally do have a reason for pop b twist to be mm -hmm. it is exactly the name of this trick that takes off from the unified that includes uh short mega so that beat was that's un that okay. that but one we, that's left unnamed here because front half and back full still exist obviously. Yeah. Uh, but that. However, thing... we would we run into the issue where if we do uh, pop when I pop would be bad because pop is a transition, right? Yeah. So unified. Unified B twist versus single leg B twist, and that I guess that would be a better way to address it. We would have to obviously there would have to be a better name for it, but yeah, B twist could be that sub ninety degree from true front side yeah or and an a -twist absolute would be the better one i just i still am just not a fan of invoking the single leg names for unified tricks but that's just me no agreed agreed I, i'm right there with you frank i think yeah. that the unified versions need their own unique names yeah and it's just hard to come up with those because who wants to do that yeah all right let's get rat full y'all just actually what? What? it could be it could be no we would have to like redo like some of the the lettering i was like we could we could reuse letters and just kind of go like the first 10 or 12 letters I know, and then yeah, each of exactly them corresponds yeah wait you... a, B, a b c and so on twists yep oh for <laughs> yep, oh I see, exactly what you're saying. I see what you're saying interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. Like, we'll explore it some other time anyway yeah uh rap fools y'all just what crying emoji i agree tactful and former rap fool are the same trick uh done with different transitions great okay the thing is that wrap is a valid transition where the wrap leg passes with intent to reach the opposite leg, as in behind or in front relative to direction of flip. I'm not sure if I agree with the front part. You can wrap in front side tricks as well as backside tricks off 
both legs, however awkward that is. You can wrap a cork. Mm, no. Uh, B twist or rise, no. Um, a swing tack would use the former master swing or hyper backswing and would be based off GMS, which can be wrapped into or swing into. I think wrap is swing. Um, yeah, wrap, wrap, is, wrap is a type of swing. Yeah. And depending on how you want to classify it, there's two types of wrap. There's like true wrap and then there's lotus wrap, which is, or the grandmaster, which is also the lotus swing. Yeah. So that's, and. But they're all swings. Like yeah, they're all, the day, they're, they're all swings. swings. So when you say that, like, you can wrap into a cork, what I hear is you saying that you can swing into a cork, and I'm like, why are you telling me this? But if you <laughs> literally, if you actually do mean something different, like, it, like, uh, I, I definitely caught the foot passing the other ankle, trying to go to the other side, but, you know, bringing up the whole backward and in front. Okay, then why say either one? If it can be either one, you've just named all of the directions that it could be. Backward and in front are the two two options. Now I know I I don't know man I don't really feel like I have a better idea of what he meant in addition to swing that makes a rap a rap because when he was describing it he was describing all the things that are also components of a swing right right I yeah I was going to start making a chart of swing breakdowns but yeah basically it's like all swing is pretty much anything where you take off one leg and you pass your leg and then we have the rap Plastic swings plant, like Yes. I just specify that. Yeah, sorry. We have the wrap swings, which are the sideways ones. And within the wrap swings, there's true wrap and there's GMS, like you said, uh, Jason. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and Lotus is a GMS swing. Muggle mm -hmm. Slayer is a true wrap. Yes. And those are technically front side. Those are the front side wraps you're talking about. We agree completely with that. Yes, I agree. Um, so, but they are, but they are all swings. And so saying that you can wrap a cork makes no goddamn sense. Then there's no reason to do it in the first place. And almost, there's no real reason to distinguish between all these different swings, yeah. except then to say that like there are different body motions that are going on here. Really, yeah. the fact that we spend so much time specifying the difference between them to the point where we even have names for some of them yeah. is because yeah. of the issues in early modern uh, mainstream tricking terminology where some things were named based off of those early names for transitions, right. like rap. Right. So. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel like we probably don't disagree too hard in this area except for the whole rap part and rapping into quirk i don't really think that's a thing right and i think that um, that may just be like we're not clear like fully understanding what is meant because when you start using transitions and then tricks that have like predetermined takeoffs like quirk it kind of becomes very confusing like what the intention is supposed to be without having you explain in further like live so maybe maybe we'll find some time to get with luke and yeah. Try to see what he's saying here, but essentially, like, yeah, I mean, you can wrap from front side, you can master swing from front side, yeah. Lotus, Muggle Slayer, Rise, all exist. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Do you guys have any other comments you'd like to look at before we finish this off? Nope. nope. I don't think so. I think that covers a lot of a lot of our like recent comments. It helps us kind of clarify some points in case some of our viewers weren't sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Cool. Well, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for leaving comments. By the way, we uh, as much as we did roast a lot of these, we actually do appreciate the comments. We like the discussion. Um, and if you disagree with some of the stuff we said, leave a comment here, and we'll eventually reply to that in a future video. So. Um, and we'll try to, you know, attack it with good faith and see what makes sense and what doesn't, you know, so. Yeah. And, and if we didn't fully understand the argument you were making today and you would like to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, please do that because we would appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, That's that helps. We don't want to misrepresent your argument and kind of like clown on you or in the comments or anything. Like, yeah. I, we don't want to discourage that. Yeah. Either. We but do we want to clown like, on top. We are just three idiots, though. So, like, we will make mistakes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and we are oh. and we are just trying to... And it is intended to be, like, lighthearted. It is supposed yeah. to be just for fun. Yeah. And we will clown on towels. So, even if he <laughs> leaves a legitimate comment... No, I'm kidding. If he leaves a legitimate comment, I would actually respond. But, um... Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I, I think we have a better chance of hell freezing over, personally. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, check out our Patreon. If you haven't gotten the chance, we got some uh, cool hit like i don't know you know what to call them like treats benefits for yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in halloween so it's treats 
Um, Streets. I'm stuck in Halloween. This whole video, I've I've had like a slight eyeliner from my, <laughs> my costume last night. I didn't mention it, but uh, yeah, that's why I look like such a hot girl right now. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'll catch you guys later.